So how are you doing, honey bunch? I'm doing great, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. So we thought we've done almost 14 years of podcasting and you've heard our voices. Mm -hmm. And with 2020, we okay. would do some videos. So we're gonna try to, once a month and maybe a little bit more, especially as we start out here, to do a video or two every month and you guys can follow along there and of course head over to garrettsgames.com and listen to the podcast too. So our first video here is going to be our year in review of 2019. Mm. So we're here recording this on January 1st. This will come out a few days after that. I got to do some editing and figure sure. out some stuff. <laughs> but uh, we are going to uh, run down our top 10 for the year, all right? So a lot of people are doing this. We figure we might as well jump in. Now, when we talk about this, we always on the podcast do in about April or so, a top 10 of the previous year. And that focuses on the games that came out for that year. Um, because by the time we get to April, hopefully, fingers crossed, we will have played all of those games. We're still, of course, in the process of doing that, but we've gotten a lot of games in over yes, the last we couple have. of weeks, yes, especially. We um, and so this is our top 10 plays of 2019. So some of these games came out in 2019, some of them came out uh, earlier, uh, but that's the focus that we've got for this, all right? So I, of course, Mm -hmm. I have a couple of honorable mentions. Are we starting with honorable in. mentions? Well, honorable mentions, you know, they didn't make my top oh, okay. 10, okay. but I want to talk about them as the experiences that they are. Okay. So these are all three games that I have played at school with my students for the most part. Now, mm. we've played most of these. Um, there's just three of them. And so one of those is The Game. All right. Oh. I, and it's a cohort, if you will, The, the Mind. All right. Okay. So the game in the mind. Good games. I can pull it off the shelf at school. I've got uh, copies at school. And it sucks the kids in. I mean, they, they just gravitate to it. It's like, oh, let's try that again. And with the mind, you, you, you're giggling and laughing as they understand how to play it and so on. So those two are kind of these two interesting, unusual card games that kids aren't used to. And we do that. Well, and what's um, great about them, obviously, is they can hold a lot of people. Right. Well, you can uh, actually with both of them are up to four or five people. But only. but can't you adjust it to play it with no, more? No, you're not really going to do it with oh, more. Okay. No, not not that one. Okay. Now the I the other one, the third one is All one right. that we picked up and we had to get when we saw it at Spiel this last year, and that was the one called Pool Pool. Oh, yeah. Very and nice. so I actually don't play the game. I run the game sure. and then it was two groups of kids or, or you know, sitting on either side of the table. And this is a game of uh, chickens. And anything with chickens we have to get because I do chickens in the classroom. So this is definitely coming to my classroom too. Right. Uh, very soon. Right. Um, at the start of the new year. So I'm yeah, very excited. And, and you're to dealing do it. out the cards one at a time. Somebody is doing that. So I'm doing that. And the you know, you're trying to count the number of eggs that come out. And I think it's five eggs. And then you stop. And you, you know, slam your hand down. But if a chicken comes out, that makes an egg go away. And then you can add other cards in, which take the chickens out. And then you have a fox that pretends to be a chicken. And all of these various cards. And oh my it's goodness. It's so these adorable, kids were, too. Uh, yes, it's And your class loved it? They ate it up. Okay. I played well, this I in my yearbook wait. class. I, yeah. I will, um, we will review this more fully later yes. um, on the podcast. And we'll let you know um, how it goes with my um, class, too. Yep. And then we'll play it with some friends and let you know about that, too. There you go. Yeah. All right. So let's start our wait, what top about, ten. What? What? Oh, do you have an honorable mention? I'm sorry. I didn't know you had an Well, honorable. actually, I have... I have like three honorable mentions well, as well, I have three. Okay. but I, I think I will wait on that because oh, you're gonna I your feel story. they might have made higher on your list. Oh, I so see. So okay. if they don't, I will put them in at the end. Okay. okay. I like that. Okay. Sounds okay. like All a right. plan. So I've done more of the talking with my honorable mentions to start. So why don't you start oh, okay. with your number 10? All right. Well... Uh, my number 10 is Montmartre. Am oh. I saying that correctly? Yeah, I think you got it okay. right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. um, I love this game. It is a card game that has beautiful art in it. And um, you're basically trying to enlist some patrons to buy the art. Um, yeah, you're the painters. You're the painters. And you have different styles for different uh, patrons. 
and the art is really beautiful. It could have just been um, four different paintings for all right. the cards, mm -hmm. but yet it's not. Um, the artist who did it made it so beautiful that the values on the cards are zero to eight, I yes, think. Yes, they are, yeah. And um, the first the zero is more like a sketch, and then it gets more colors as the painting becomes more developed. Yeah. Obviously, you can sell to the patrons at any level, but you have to meet the, the game requirements yeah, for doing sure. that by getting majorities or highest number and things of this nature. But it's a really awesome 10-minute game mm. that is a super think, and I strongly recommend it. I think it's a really solid game too. It might have made my list if we had played it more. This kind of right at the end of the yes. year. Mm -hmm. um, we got in a few plays of it and I really like it. It's interesting that you really have to be paying attention to what the other players are doing and seeing how you can work your magic with the patrons. And this works very well to players. Yes. And I know you've played it multi-players. I haven't had that opportunity yet. Yeah. Um, but uh, two players, many times card games aren't gonna be That's as true. awesome that way. And this one works really well. Definitely. All right. What's your, oh, so my number 10 was Montmartre. That's good. My number 10 is Trails of Tucana. Yes, from Aporta Games. This is another one of those roll and write, or in this case, a draw and draw game. So you are, uh, yeah, everybody has their own player board. Um, you're drawing on it with, and we laminate it, so with markers. Um, and you can put a line anywhere. You're trying to connect cities that are on the edges of the board, trying to connect little uh, icons to those cities and scoring points each round for two or three rounds. I just love the think in the game as you're trying to, okay, what's the best line I can draw with those two cards that are just flipped so that I'm drawing between adjacent different types of uh, landscapes, fields, landscapes, right? yeah. exactly. And so it, it just works really well. It, I, I like these some of these draw and draw games um, and this is a really solid entry. Trails of Tucana, my number 10. I love this game too. Yeah. So it didn't make my list, but you know, I, I'm glad it made yours. Um, because it's such a great think. It's so spatial and yeah. it's got uh, two sides to the board so you can do a shorter version or a slightly longer. That's it doesn't add point, that yeah. very much to it, but it it adds, um, you have more time to try to accomplish certain things. Mm -hmm. And I think it is fantastic too. Yeah. Okay, that's my number 10, Trails of Tucana. Well, I guess I'm gonna start this one out too. My number nine is Brussels 1897. Oh. This is another card game that I love because it has different mechanics in it that mm -hmm. um, are super. First of all, there's a bidding mechanic with your cards and that puts it into a display where then you are doing things of, regarding area majority. Mm -hmm. I love many area majority yeah, games. Definitely. And so you're working on the certain columns, which mm -hmm. give you certain benefits um, as well. But the majority uh, portion, I like doing that. Mm -hmm. And then there's ones where you're making shields that come together. And so it's not um, value majority, but card majority. So these cards yeah. are used to buy paintings, to put on um, exhibitions of paintings yeah. to get um, to build buildings, to build or get buildings, materials building materials to, yeah. to build buildings. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, so it has a lot of fun in it, and yeah. I, I love this. Card it's game. interesting how the array then works. As as you're saying, you get groups of four cards, and they make up a shield, and whatever the majority is there. Really solid game. Yeah. And then definitely. there's p people who have powers, and I like to utilize mm -hmm. those type of things too. And um, and then you're, there's pr there's jail. <laughs> you know, yeah. where you lose some of your bidding cards. So yeah. it's, it's a lot of fun. All right. So my number a nine is Brussels 1897. And some of you might have heard of the, the, the board game version. This is different, but it, yeah. Yeah, but it utilizes the same art and is very beautiful too. Smaller box, yes. All right, my number nine is a group of games, if you will. So one of the things that I like to hey, do, yeah, and I'm trying like to, I'm, uh, yeah, well, hey, <laughs> is, uh, you know, one of our first games that we got as we got into the hobby was Carcassonne. Oh, oh, big time. And so for me, my number nine is the five different Carcassonne mm. maps 
that came out at this last year's Essen. Now, I do believe they could pre be printed out for as a PDF, but we bought them at Essen and were able to get them into our suitcase and the nice laminated maps. And each of the five, it, you know, has the constraints of the borders of the country, but then also has an interesting twist using these little tokens that adds to the map. So for example, France, what do you think of when you're going to France besides beautiful architecture? Wine, of course. Mm -hmm. So there's a wine mm -hmm. element to uh, the rules for that one. In uh, England, you use the tokens and you can get an extra turn immediately right after you play. So it was, I love it when a new version of a game or an expansion makes me re-enlist my love into an old classic. And Carcassonne is one that we have loved as a two-player especially forever. And these maps just reinvigorated that for me. That angst and that puzzle building, great stuff. So all of the Carcassonne maps is my number nine. And I, I this should have made my list because I love these <laughs> maps so much. And I, <clears throat> excuse me, I agree with you that, um, it's nice to revisit a game where you don't have to relearn all the rules, you, yeah, but there's some true. tweaking of the yeah. rules so you can just jump in and feel comfortable right away, right. but then challenge yourself to think differently. And these maps are in. Incredible. And it doesn't so, it doesn't make the game last too much longer. Oh no! Oh part. no! No, it's yeah. still as fast and as smooth and as beautiful as the original Carcassonne, but it makes you think about it differently and enjoy it. Great choice, dear. Thanks, hon. Mm -hmm. What's your number eight? Oh my goodness! Well, my number eight is a gorgeous game because this is one of the games that I saw at S and I was like. We have to get it. I'm drooling. <laughs> it's so beautiful. It's called Papillon. Yes. Oh, okay. And right. you know, uh -huh. it's this big, you know, well, you're seeing a picture. It's a white box and a big um, butterfly. Mm -hmm. And it is a stunning game. It is um, tile drafting, um, but you only have, I think, eight, maybe 10 rounds. It's really fast. Maybe. It's a short game. Yes, it's exactly. really fast. Eight and rounds, you, believe, yes. when you're drafting your tiles, you're also getting gnomes or caterpillars and you're putting them onto your board and when you accomplish um making um a closure of a, a world kind of like Car Carcassonne, Carcassonne yeah, yeah exactly uh, when you accomplish the that, flower gardens you're yeah making, the gardens yeah. that you're making are by color mm -hmm. and then there's these three-dimensional trees where you have butterflies on a clothespin that you attach and you're working totally on cool. area majority. Love that. And each of the trees has different <laughs> values, you know, first place, second place, third place type of thing. Those change so, from game to game. And you, that was rotate, you yeah. know, like that's a little thing that the tree sits in. Yeah. It is so stunning. Yeah. And I can't recommend it enough. If you see it and you don't think it's beautiful, well, I don't know what I can say about that because that wouldn't make any sense to me. It is gorgeous. So. It is beautiful, and it's it, it does. It's not as fiddly as it might you might think. It's no. really a beautiful game and fun to play. Definitely. Oh, it's it's a lot of fun. Okay, all right. So my number. Oh, and eight, so that was oh, my number sorry. eight, yes. and that's Papillon. Okay, my number eight is Alubari, a nice <gasps> cup of tea from Tony Boydell and Studio H. Uh, this is a re-implementation of sorts of many of the rules that are from his probably most famous game, which is Snowdonia, um, but in a way that I, I just love the implementation mm. and uh, of the tea mechanic in, his, in it. Um, you know, chai tea is now something that invigorates you and gives you more power. You have um, an actual, uh, the track that is very clearly laid out um, and you're moving along that and so as you get to the end of that that tr uh, triggers the end game I like the fact that even though the uh, weather mechanic that is in Snowdonia is also here that the mechanism in this case makes it so that of course rain which is you know real just horrible in Snowdonia it seems yeah that well, well that makes the tea grow so then you can mm. work on that aspect of the game so I really like Alubari a nice cup of tea my number eight. So this was my honorable mention, and I okay. assumed that it would be much higher on your list. This was my number 11. I love this game so much. Yeah, um, Tony Boydell's great designer. Good if you, friend. If you, if you like Snowdonia, you're gonna love this game. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and even if you don't know Snowdonia, you would still love this game. It's yeah. so Easy solid. to pick up, but really a good thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see, well, my number seven, we'll try to pronounce this correctly, is 
Paris, la cité de la lumière. Very nice. Yes. Yeah, she, she looks to me because I had French in high school. Right? <laughs> so I had Spanish. That was a while ago. But yes. All right. So I love this game. Not only is it exceedingly beautiful, um, but it is a two-player only game yep. where you are, it's kind of in two parts. Yeah, like, very true. Um, uh, through the desert or biblios mm, um mm -hmm. you first you're building the board and you have these um uh, square tiles mm -hmm. that you're placing down that fit perfectly into a board and they have your color your player's color and a neutral color and sidewalks yes so all of these things are uh, in it so you're either it's very simple take a tile uh place a tile or you're taking some tetris type pieces that are then going to be put on top in the second half of the game. Yeah. So here's this first half where you're trying to make the board the way you want because you want to put the Tetris piece that you're going to be drafting mm -hmm. into a spot that has only your color on it because you can't put it on top of somebody else's or, color. Or the neutral color. The neutral color, color yeah. which is very mm -hmm. important. So you're p concentrating on making this part of the board and deciding, okay, well, I'm not going to place a piece this time. I'm going to draft a piece, which means right. that you're going to have potentially more power to put pieces as I'm down building the as you're building. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it is stunning. Beyond that, so basically you're trying to get major your 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 place your little colors. Well, it's not your colors. You're putting your pawn on it to yeah, make it your color exactly, because the exactly. the pieces that you put on are the, anyone's color. Yes. Um, so you are trying to. Um, get it around light. Um, Lampposts. Luminaire, right? Yeah, luminaire. So, so that's your light, and that you're going to be your multiplier. So the more lights that are surrounding your place, the better. Right. But then there's these stunning postcards. Yeah. Each one is a piece of art, yeah. and it adjusts the game slightly, and the different ones come in depending on the game. Right, sure. So you could have a little... Uh, annex that makes your building bigger or you could have a dance or you could have a painter who wants to be uh having a bunch of light but be on the on the uh, the sidewalk yes. areas and not being blocked by buildings so it changes the game as you play it and i just think it's stunning yeah and the postcards are just so evocative of kind of the belle epoque paris mm -hmm. and so on you know one of the things that i remember from one of our uh, fortunate trips to uh, France, when we went to the Marais one time, there was a sh postcard shop. Yes. So we, it's, you know, those we went old to, postcards. yeah, the old postcards, and we bought a few of those. So mm -hmm. it reminds me, and so I'm totally with you on this it's one. Beautiful. It has a great game worth checking out, two player only, and in kind of that Cosmos two player box size. So kind of a throwback in that way. And you play in the box. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay. So that was Paris, La Cité de Lumière. All right. My number seven is. The Magnificent. This is from Porta Games and is a circus themed, uh, a uh, like Cirque du Soleil. Cirque du Soleil. Yeah, exactly. Of, That's what we're looking you for. You know, performers that look really unusual and uh, kind of scary. <laughs> Maybe scary. Yeah. They kind of glow in the dark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but you are the uh, head of the circus, if you will, and you are either building your buildings to per do performances, you are traveling to the next place, which gathers stuff, or you are putting on performances. And it's only three rounds. And as Shelly said when we reviewed this on the podcast, mm -hmm. which isn't going to come out for a while because we're well ahead, mm -hmm. but um, this is a game where you only have 12 turns turns and so, so that fast. 12 turns oh. three rounds you're trying to figure it out and the cool thing here is that you are dice drafting but then you have to pay for the highest value at the end of your four actions in a in a round um whatever the highest value in a particular color is that's what you're gonna have to pay so if i took more orange than any other color and it's nine i'm gonna have to pay nine coin at the end of the round and money is really tight so all of that works really well i really like the magnificent well this obviously made my list so oh. i can talk about it again oh, later okay. or right. we can say i love it it's fantastic <laughs> i highly well, we'll recommend it, it and it is higher on my on my list um the dice the dice drafting is fantastic yes. but this also has a board that has tetris pieces yes. on it that you're building and each of the performers need a certain type of tetris type piece yeah. so you're trying to build your board use and covering that up to get victory points yeah. as well as putting on these great shows where you might have more than one performer right. which means that you had to pay a lot more money when money is tight because you're having to use the dice 
that allow you to have the right colors. Right. And then exactly. there's gems and some, you have to throw in certain colored gems. And it there's is. There's a lot a, going on. It's a heavier game. And there's uh, um, three different rondella wheels that you're going on collecting gems and also getting better tents. It's a fantastic game. It really is. And it plays in about 60 minutes. Yeah, so my number seven, The Magnificent. Good choice, dear. Um, my number six, I love it. It's called Horticult Horticulture Master. Shelly likes gardens. Yes, I do. <laughs> and if you've uh, played Cottage Gardens, you'll kind of uh, recognize some similarities in it. It is different, though, Yeah. Um, in, in several ways. One, there's a card um, drafting component, yes. and that um, means that you're drafting the elements that you need for planting, you know, sun, and um, you have different flowers that you're drafting. Right. And each of the, um, the Tetris type pieces. Again, Tetris pieces. Um, yeah. But these are big. They're big. Yeah. Uh, each of them uh, requires certain elements and certain mm -hmm. flowers and things like that. And possibly and, tools that you need. And you as need well. to get tools yeah. and you also need to turn in certain um, plants to get other types of plants. Right. And so and when you're the first person to accomplish a certain size, you get these adorable um, stand up animals. Shelly really likes getting It's really animals. beautiful. It's really so, likes it. so beautiful. <laughs> and then, um, then what's really cool is you adjust your garden. So you, once you have these other pieces, you're trying to be the first one to get these bonuses right. of um, these animals. Uh, you, you, you turn in those pieces and plus cards to get bigger landscapes on your... Yeah. Um, so it's so, as if you turn up your garden yeah. to smaller pieces turn those in so you can get bigger pieces. Right, very so, cool. you know, and it, yeah. it ends very quickly, you know, as soon as somebody uh, finishes their garden. About 45 minutes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's really solid, solid, solid game. Okay. And that is called Horticulture Master. All right, my number six is a SN 2018 release that I still really love and need to get to the table more. This is Forum Trajanum, mm -hmm. and uh, this is uh, Stronghold Games, really solid Stefan Feld, Feld right? yeah. exactly. Yeah, he's great. Some people kind of dismissed this because there are a lot of little bits um, and small pieces that you have to kind of fiddle with. But I think it's a really solid game, especially two players. We play a lot of our games two players, mm -hmm, as you know, mm -hmm. if you're listening to the podcast. Um, but I like the idea of you've got two tiles in your hand at the beginning of every round, and you have to pass one to the other player. Mm. So you're like, oh my gosh, these I are both them right! <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you pass it. And, and then you can either play the one that you've got or play both of them. And so that, that angst that you have of that tile drafting is very cool. And then the possibilities that you have as you're trying to build Build your board, and I love the way in which you, the the card draw tells you the column and the row mm -hmm. that you're drafting that you're going to be placing and drafting from. You know, all, all these, but then great you can adjust mechanisms. it too exactly. if you really need exactly. to or want to, because there's yeah. benefits to having certain things in certain rows and certain columns. And exactly, uh, it's a fantastic game, and yeah. it did make my high up list, but not. quite quite okay. my um, honorable mentions. All I right. agree. So that's Forum Trajanum from Stronghold Games. Okay, my number five is also a cheat. A cheat? Kind of a, like your um, Carcassonne maps. Okay, Okay, right. so it really wasn't a cheat when I was giving him a hard time because I'm going to do the exact same thing. Um, and I, my number five is Welcome To. Oh. Now, okay. I love this game. It was one of the first kind of card and write yeah, ones. Draw that, and draw. The draw and draw style. And it's very fast. And, but... This we already knew how to play because mm -hmm. we've mm -hmm. had it and we've had the expansions sure. from earlier. Sure. But you were able to get another expansion, yeah. the winter oh, yeah. expansion, uh, which has a bunch of different uh, maps to it. So one of them is the Christmas map. And that's <laughs> lovely because you it changes the rules just slightly. But you, if you know how to play yeah. it, you don't have to relearn anything. It, and you're go, dealing like with maps. like the Carcassonne. Yeah, exactly. And um, you're working on getting the lights. Um, on the buildings yeah. and that's fun and then another one is the Halloween map mm -hmm. and that of course you're working you know do you have some candy corns and some ghosts and you have different end game options that you're working on mm -hmm. as well as what powers those give you throughout the game and then there was two other ones one is called the doomsday bunker mm -hmm. and that one you know you want to ingratiate yourself with your neighbors basically this is the kind of game where you're building a neighborhood so you're right. working on buzz for your neighborhood, advertising for your neighborhood, and you're adjusting things based on the three cards that come yeah. out where you're going to put 
your or two cards, excuse right. me, two cards that come out. So if you know yeah. welcome two, yeah, you'll you'll understand, you're understand this. this and it's really straightforward. And but so the so the bunkers, you know, you got to ingratiate yourself with your neighbors and have places for them to be. So you got to make bunkers, <laughs> and then probably the one that's most challenging and the one that I've I've talked to people who are they like welcome to but then they're like oh my gosh I love this board is the zombie outbreak <laughs> now um, I love the board too I love all the boards probably almost equally I would yeah, say okay. um, but a uh, zombie outbreak is a lot of fun because you're gonna lose your people to the zombies and you have to do certain things to protect them and use your cards in different ways and it and it brings the game up to a higher level for yeah. someone who really wanted because sure. you know it's a very straightforward game yeah you gotta uh, build for your fortifications yeah but you yeah. gotta you gotta work on you know right. Saving your people. Okay. So my number five is welcome to plus expansion boards. <laughs> All right. My number five is another uh, Amigo game. And Amigos have been coming out with some interesting ones. We tried one today, one today, for today example, and it was so much fun. Called Grizzly, yeah, which was yeah, kind of fun. Yeah, very, um, very cute. But this is much better. This one is Lighthouse Run. And this comes in a long box, and you have all this long board, and you are trying to, as a race game, trying to move your boats and get them to safe harbor. But of course, you can only move in the spots where the lighthouse beams are shining on the river. So you have cards that you're playing so that you can both move the lighthouse beacons, and you have these great cardboard lighthouses, but then the, uh, these three balls that move around that are the lighthouse beacons, and it shows where those different things shine onto the river. And so you're not only do, moving them to help yourself, but of course you're moving them so that other people can't move or are going to have to move them themselves if when they play on their turn. So it's just this great little race game that it was just fun every time we've played it. So Lighthouse Run is my number five. This is a very fun game because... When a card comes out, you have to sometimes get to move only one of your pieces or multiple of your pieces, but other times you have to move other people's pieces with your pieces. Right. So you're benefiting them. And then also if the lighting isn't correct, you can't go far enough. So the other person right. could block you in some ways. So you might only get to do part of your Movement. advancement. Mm -hmm. So it is a solid, you look at it and you think, this is going to be really kind of old school, easy game. Right, right. I don't know. It just has that it's kind not, of look about it. Yeah. With the, it reminded it me feel initially, like a it, it feels like a throw pack. And it reminded me when we first were starting to play mm -hmm. it as of Cartagena, where you're trying huh? to save your, your no, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're yeah. not going backwards really per but se. But you do have to, in this you, case, help the other you people. You have to help yeah. other people. That's and you also have to get stuck um, in spots, and um, you also can't um, save all of your people. Just like Cartagena, I don't think you That's true. are able to save all your people. That's a funny Well, thing. one person saves, saves all of everyone. their people. And, and another again. person is like, eh, I didn't do so good. All right. So, Lighthouse Run. All right. My number four, which I'm actually surprised you haven't said already because I know we both really love this game, yeah, what's that? is uh, Promenade. My number four is Promenade as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, all right, this is actually really awesome then. You can, we can talk about it together. It's so, so think Dominion. Yeah, deck building. Deck building with uh, auction, what do you call that? Uh, uh, where you're, you're manipulating- Stock market. Stock market. Yeah, exactly. Um, with, Beautiful art and impressionistic your, like yeah, art. just is stunning. And you're putting on, you're opening certain museums, and certain museums want certain things. Exactly. And you're trying to make sure that you're raising the value and making sure that you finish the certain museums because right. only a, a, a few of them are going to score. Right. And it's just this manipulation, and it's so simple and beautiful, but hard. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what, how well, to, what I like about it. I'll tell you is that you know you've got your basic deck building game, but then because you are building up the value of the paintings that you're collecting, mm. they become cash you can use and are going to be more valuable at certain times than other times. So 
A card that you get early may be worth very little, but may become more valuable over the course of the game. Because you work to make that happen. Because you work to make that happen, exactly. So then you can use it and and it has more functionality. So I like that way in which the game morphs over time. And you, and and of course, it's just beautiful. So, you know, that's a stellar. Yeah, I'm so glad. Yeah. I really can't believe you got it as your number four. So, both of us are number four. Promenade. Exactly. All right, so what's your number three? Oh, yeah, because I get to talk exactly. again. I think I'm manipulating this. Okay. I I think you probably put this on yours, but I don't know because I know how much I love it. It's called Zoom In Barcelona. Not on mine, but could have made mine. Okay. Um, each So this is a think ticket to ride type of style of game. Okay, all right. Um, all right. You are trying to get to certain locations within Barcelona, Mm -hmm. and every single card is a complete piece of art of an actual place within Barcelona. So you have- Yeah, different monuments uh, and stuff like that. Casa Mia, and all the different beautiful um, places. Gaudi. Gaudi, and it's not a photo, Mm -hmm. they're actually um, drawn, each each one. So that's, of course, makes it beautiful. But the difference, so you're trying to get, those are photographs that you're taking, basically. You're running around, it's a contest. And it's a very quick race game. Yes. So you're trying to get to these different um, places, and you have to um, do that based on cards that you get from the tourist office, which allow Mm -hmm. you to either, you don't have to have a card, which is walk and you go much slower, or you can get like your bike and go a little faster, or a taxi, go super fast. So that allows you to go more spaces right, and you and them. you all see what's available. So right. you know. Yes. And I love the art, but sure. it, but it also is really great because it's numbered and colored by region. So mm, you can mm-hmm. easily find where you need to be That's without right. even paying any attention to yeah. the art. So you're taking these photos in these locations. And of course, there's um, the dragon and there's different things that allow you to do different stuff. But you can go to a metro station so you can jump ahead and get to places. And then there's right. nighttime spots you want to take pictures of, which is a different um, part of the game. It's just Yeah, and there's a basic and game fun. and a more uh, expert game uh, with uh, the nighttime spots, which detail how many of your cards are going to score, and you have to go to them in order. So it really right, yeah. So if game. you get all these tickets, or tickets, I'm, I'm sorry, all these places in Barcelona that you're going to, but yet you haven't gone to these nighttime spots that you need to do, then you're not going to be able to score right. them anyway. Exactly. So you're, you know, I think it's it ends like as soon as one person gets eight or some, some very small number right, of right. photos, but it's you quick. also have to get the nighttime stuff going, and it's, it's a great game. Yeah. So again, that is? That is called um, Zoom in Barcelona. Her number three. So my number three. Yeah. Also beautiful art. Okay. And this is one of a couple of the games. So Promenade, which we just talked about, and this game also was one that we got as a Kickstarter. Though this one is much more readily available, and that is Parks. And this oh. is mm. uh, just a very cool... Uh, it's interesting. I use, just use the word promenade. You are walking like you're walking through the national parks and you're trying to get to various parks. You're trying to collect resources as you go to fulfill, you know, your, the requirements to, you know, I, I think of it as, oh, these are the requirements I need to really explore this particular park. <laughs> but the art for these, it is all of the United States national parks are represented in the game. And it's just this beautiful art that is evocative of that particular place. So for example, you know, like Sequoia National Park will have this beautiful artwork of Redwood Sequoias, Grand Canyon, all of these places just are represented. And it's just this cool mechanism of you are kind of like um, Takenoko, where you Mm. are marching along a path. You can't go backwards. And you're collecting resources as you go. And only certain people can, depending on the number of players, can go to a particular spot. And if you're there first, you get more benefit. You get more benefit. And then if you get to the end, that's when you can fulfill going to a park or possibly uh, getting some other items. So parks... Just a beautiful, family-friendly game that I really appreciated, and its art is amazing. That is my number three. And uh, that made my, that was my 12th. Okay. So oh, that made oh, my honorable right. mention. Okay. The beauty factor does bring it up as well. But the, the path and trying to be the first one to get somewhere, but you might have to skip ahead to get yeah. the better yeah. resources, but then you can't go back, so you don't want to skip ahead too far. 
And then there's special things where you could stand in the same places and <laughs> um, you just, it's a lot of fun. And each one of those is a piece of art. I think they won a contest for, or, or something. I, I have and no idea. I'd have this to go back will and look be at it, really uh, sold, I believe, at national parks. It should be. Um, I hope Get it online. Bring, it's worth hopefully it. people will, um, it, it will become um, a bigger game and more people will play it because it is a lot of fun. Yeah. So parks, my number three. What's your number two? Mm, well, Doug already mentioned this one much earlier. Oh, really? The oh. Magnificent. Oh, it is. It, it is magnificent. magnificent. You thought it was more magnificent. Then, yes, I did. So I don't think I need to say too much about it, except um, take a look at it. And if you don't particularly like the art, it's blackboard and, uh, you know, these kind of unique characters because you're putting on a circus. Don't let that persuade or dissuade you from trying the game yeah um, i think it's beautiful yeah. and i i think the game mechanics are fantastic they are really cool all right so my number two yes is an okaizu brand game this is <laughs> across the u.s across the united states it is i think mm -hmm. one of the best if not the best train game that we have played i agree 100 it is uh, an interesting deep think that plays in less than an hour with some stock market manipulation as you are placing tokens and building tracks on the board. Just a, a, a solid game. Um, Hisashi Hayashi and Okaizu brand, that's his brand. He comes up with just such diverse, amazing games. Uh, Yokohama, Yokohama is yeah, probably the biggest of, of his games. Too. This is a lighter game than that, but still a heavier game than some of his. And definitely um, worth it. My number two across the United States. Well, I have to say, you did a good job. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Because that's my number one. <laughs> I love this game. I, I, it, it, for me, it is the best train game. Because it's such a good think. And it's such a short amount of time. And it's going to end before you accomplish all those um, um, places you want to go. And uh, it's, a great, it's a great think. Yeah, it it's really so is. much fun. I mean, we love Yokohama, but that is a heavier game than this. But this still is such a great thing, and it's just so fast. Yeah, with the best of the Okaizu brand, they have been brought over by some domestic publisher, and so we're hoping that in the next year or so, this game gets over mm -hmm. here. If you can track it down, it's really well it's worth fantastic. the entry point. Yeah, it's All right. my number one. So my number one. What is your number one? I have no idea. Now. It's not something that has happened on your list. Yet. What? I know. But it's Wingspan. You. <laughs> okay. Wingspan is a beautiful game. A lot of people are putting this up in their top 10. I just love this game. Now, here's the big caveat that I have to say. It is my number one because I play it almost exclusively just two player. And I'm nice to play with. Well, I love playing <laughs> with you no matter what. Yes. But I played it four and five player. Don't. I, I, it's not a game for four or five players mm. just because the downtime is a problem. Yeah. So the caveat here, this is my number one because I play it with Shell and as a two player game, Wingspan is just wonderful. There's mm -hmm. very little downtime. You're drafting with the dice to get the, the various resources that you need. The bird cards are just so Stunning. beautiful. I mean, it's a perfect uh, theme for a game. I, I love the fact that you know we our list is filled with games that aren't just you know trading in the Mediterranean or <laughs> uh, you know going out into space or killing zombies. Though so you had a I did have a zombie one. Yeah, yeah, you did on that one. Yeah. So Wingspan is phenomenal. I'm looking forward to getting the European expansion of Birds to the table here shortly, and so that is my. Number one. So that was my number one last year. Yes. So I have to say, I completely concur that that is, should be like on my, you know, one, right. one B, okay. one C, yeah. one D or something like that. The top <laughs> as, as well. I think it is a stunning game. It is yeah. the theme, the beauty, uh, the just trying to get the right birds for the right locations. And you're told on each card what the percent likelihood is that you're of being right. able to accomplish something, which does uh, minimize some of the uh, like luck, luck sure. on it. And that sure. you got to choose to only pick something that had 3% likelihood of happening. That was your <laughs> choice, person. So, you know, just, you know, be okay with that. You chose to do that. I'll be like, well, my card didn't come out. Well, it says 3%. 
you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I think it is. It's great. It's I just fantastic. Love it. And it's beautiful. And uh, Stonemeyer. Um, has an interesting uh, model for how they're building things. We haven't played Tapestry yet, which is a little bit controversial. I do want to get that to the table. Mm -hmm. But Wingspan, for my plays in 2019, solid game, my number one. Right up there for me, too. All right. That'll do it for our top tens for 2019. You can come back in April and we will do the games that came out in 2019. And of course, every week you can tune into the podcast. We're up to 704 or 705 a lot, now. A We've lot. got a lot. You got almost 14 years of podcasts <laughs> if you really want to take a deep dive and binge here. And we uh, love doing it. The audio is fun to do. It's a lot easier than doing this video editing, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm, it's worth mm -hmm. checking out. Go to garrettsgames.com if you want to uh, explore the audio versions as you're walking, as you're driving, doing whatever you need to do. We look forward to doing more of these and uh, give us some feedback below and uh, we'll see you next month. Well, actually, we're going to do a best of December here, so oh. we'll be back shortly <laughs> and then we'll be monthly. All right? Have a good one. See you later. Bye. Bye.